So first and foremost, for everyone that does not know me, my name is Scrub. Thank you so much for joining. I appreciate you. Hope everyone had an awesome, awesome day. So tonight's lesson, we're going to be talking about market internals, and then we're going to do a quick little question and answer towards the end of the session. So first and foremost, what the hell are these? Am I right? What is this? So these are what are known as market internals. Primarily, there are three major market internals. So the first one that we're going to be talking about is volume. So there's, like I said, there's three measurements of market internals. So the vol, the ADD, and the tick. These help give traders more insight into strength or lack thereof in a market. It helps with figuring out direction, right? So the, the internals that we're going to cover today will be for the New York Stock Exchange, so the SPY. So the first one we're going to be talking about is the vol, so the volume difference. So what it does, it compares the total daily volume falling into up stocks or down stocks. So basically bullish stocks or bearish stocks. Based on, now this is the very important part to understand, based on the yesterday's close. So let me repeat myself. Compares the daily total volume following bullish stocks or bear stocks based on yesterday's close, not the current intraday. And where the, all of this information is basically the sum of 500 stocks. The sum of the New York Stock Exchange is this. Oh, pretty much the average of upside stocks and downside stocks. So <clears throat> going back to it, um, talking about the actual daily volume. So if the stock flips from down to up, so basically bearish to bullish or vice versa, that is a total daily volume slip. So we'll talk about that in a minute. So what this actually means, the vol is basically the volume difference. When looking at market internals, you always want to be looking at intraday. You do not want to be looking at, you know, like daily or any of that type of time frame. These are not for any of that type of analysis. This is for intraday trading. Let's sort like this is for scalpers and day traders pretty much. All right. So a good time frame that I found that's pretty valuable is the 15 minute. This way it kind of reduces noise, but still gives you pretty good accurate information. Now Right off the open, I would recommend maybe using the five minute time frame for probably like the first like five to 10 minutes, then switch over to the 15 minutes from there forth afterwards, right? So now another thing that we want to be understanding of is usually for the market eternal. So everything that we've been, we're going to be talking about tonight, you do not want to have after hours. So the pre-market and the after hours, you do not want. You do not want these on your chart because most of the times they provide skewed data and that's not ideal for us. So we want to turn off extended trading hours. So if you use thinkorswim, how do you do that, right? So first we go into the chart settings. We go to the style settings. Then we go into the actual equity tab. And then there's a thing that says show extended trading hours. You turn that off. All right, so you turn that off. Then you go into the time axis tab and there's a thing that says show rollover lines. You wanna turn that off as well. Or excuse me, I'm so sorry. You wanna turn that on. So you sh you're charged to see if something like this. So what normally you will see something like this, right? But you want to be seeing something like this when analyzing market internals. So now that we got that out of the way, the thing that we want to talk about next is you want to draw a zero line. So you want to draw a zero value line on your chart in order to divide the positive and the negative values. Next, how to read this chart. So if the price action, so in this specific right here, if the price action is hovering around the zero line, this is indicating that not very much volume influx is happening. A lot of indecision. 
so choppy, right? It's basically saying the majority of the Fortune 500 companies are indecisive. And this is a good sign that you don't want to be trading during this. You don't really want to be trading during this whatsoever. This is what is known as a risk off scenario. When you see choppy price action near the vault on the zero line, that's really not what you want to be seeing. You want to be seeing something like this, directional, 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 right? Because it's showing, it's showing aggressive, it's showing aggression and it's showing direction. This is showing nothing. It's basically showing indecision. We don't want to be look, we don't want to be trading during this time period. What we want to be seeing, like we just said, we want to be seeing the price action. Um, pretty much, how do we put it? How do I put it? We we want to see the price action run right out of the gate with not much choppy or hovering around the zero mark in order to see an early read of a possible trending up or trending down day. So if if we're you know below the zero line, clearly this is negative. So if we're trending like this in this specific menu, we're negative. So this could be a possible bearish trending day because we're directional under on the negative side. Whereas over here, if we're trending to the positive side, this could be considered possibly bullish trending day, right? So now that we got that covered, the key takeaway for that aspect is we really wanna see direction right out of the gate pretty much the first like 30 minutes um because if you see something like this and if you see something like this like the the price action hovering around the zero line most of the day and then pushes up and or down late in the actual market um that's not really a major conviction thesis this could very well end up being um a fake out truthfully um, now, there are different scenarios where this could be um, okay. Like, for example, yesterday during the federal meeting, it is because of a massive catalyst, you know, the federal data announcing. Now, that's okay why something like this happened. Like, we, we were choppy most of the day until the news came out. That's, that is okay. Now, if, if it's just a regular, you know, old Joe Schmo day, with no major um, no major economic news and just a regular day. If you see that type of stuff, and then you finally see a move like hours and hours later, then that is not really a good confirmation for you because it very well could be a fake out. It really could be a fake out. So so you want to be aware of this, right? Um, so this way you don't really get faked out nearly enough um how do i put it i'm trying to make it as simple as possible you, you, on regular days without economic news you don't want to be seeing something like this like a lot of choppiness and then the move hours and hours later that's not good you're good it's probably going to be a fake out Whereas if it's an economic news day with you know severe catalyst, then then this is okay to see something like that. That's fine. Um, but that's pretty much the vol is the volume difference. Um, now another thing. So this is a specific private indicator. Uh, it's not public on Thinkorswim. So if you want it, just message me privately. I will happily have, uh, give it to you. But it's called the market breath bubbles. Okay. So what the heck are they? So it tells us strength of the actual volume. So how strong is the are the positive or the negative values, um, which is important information. So now this is this script right up here is only useful for this, for the for the volume. Only this is the only script that's useful for this specific market internal. You don't use this for anything else. This is only for this, right? So how to use the market breath bubbles to our advantage. As you can kind of see up here, they're showing ratios, right? They're showing ratios. So if it's a ratio such as like one to one, that's a sign of a strong choppy day. 
if it's just one to one. That's that is not a day to trade. There's not a lot of volume coming in currently, and what is known as a risk off day, right? So that's a risk off day. When the ratios become higher, such as maybe two to one, three to one, and so on, that becomes a much better confirmation of volume. This then becomes what is known as a risk on day. The better the ratio, the higher the conviction. Um, now we have to also remember, see there's negative values and there's positive values. So, so let's kind of mark that down real quick. So let's say kind of an example. So let's say we have positive five to one. That is bullish. This is bullish. And then we have maybe negative seven to one. This is, this is bearish. So whatever, whatever the, the notion is in front. So if it's a if it's plus, that's positive. That's bullish. If it's a negative, that is bearish. And usually you want to have at least at least two to one for bulls for for bulls, right? At least um, for ratio. If it's a one to one, that's, that's we don't want to be trading one to one because it's basically saying there's not much volume coming in, not high, not very high conviction, just not worth our time, right? So something that's extremely important, and now this is only pertaining to bearish downside days. This is only for bearish information right here, not for the bulls. So the downside reads are always going to be much more aggressive than upside reads. In order to see a true downwards trending day, you want to see at least negative four to one ratio so like negative four to one ratio whereas for bull days you can get away with like two to one or three to one whereas for bearish days you really want to see at least a minimum of negative four to one and then obviously the the better you know the hot the better the connection so if it's like six negative six to one that's obviously better right so now these numbers can get very high as well so like these numbers aren't uncommon to get to like negative 10 to one or like negative 15 to one. If you see something like that, that is an, an insanely high conviction that there's probably going to be a, a, a trending day, whether it be bearish or bullish. Right. So, that, so, so that's something we kind of want to be in, in mindful of as well. Um, so just to kind of reiterate for the ratios you want to have for the bullish ratios you want to have at least two to one minimum and then for the bearish ratios you at least want to have negative four to one ratio because for the for the bearish downside days you, they're always going to be more aggressive so you need to have higher conviction right so that that's that's important to understand um I know I talked a lot there before I continue do, do you guys have any questions about that just so we're all on the same page We'll talk about other stuff later on, but like, don't give me other questions right now. Just, just tell me if you have any questions about this. So far, I don't really see any other questions. So we're just going to keep going forward. All right. So that is the vault, right? Now, another tip, just, just before I forget, you want to see these ratios actually be in sync. If you notice here, we have the New York Stock Exchange and we have also have the NASDAQ. If they're not in sync here, so if the, the New York Stock Exchange is you know, positive and then we have the NASDAQ negative, this means they are not in sync and that is a divergent. That could be another good indicator that this could possibly be a choppy day in both markets because they're not in sync. Ideally, we would like them to be reading the same thing either both positive or both negative in this case this is this is the same today this is this is today's information they were both negative so that means they're in sync that's that's something we want to see whereas if let's say for example today was like positive four to one new york stock exchange and maybe negative two to one nasdaq then that's not in sync and that's possibly a choppy day and we want to be 
aware of that and not just, you know, go full size because it, we could get faked out. Um, so another thing we want to be mindful of is when the price action crosses the zero line, that is a, uh, a very key shift happening. So kind of, let me, let me, let me break that down now. So, all right. So yesterday we actually ended the day uh, negative, right? So we ended the day bearish. So today we ended the day also bearish. So tomorrow, since we use these values from the day prior, we are opening the day negative, regardless if we end up like way up here. If, if our price action ends up like way up here tomorrow morning, we are still negative. The only way that we become positive is when we cross this zero line. So like when we cross zero, then we end up becoming positive, right? Whereas if we're positive, 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 we're way up here, and then we're still positive because we're above the zero line. Even if we do something like this, we just keep going down, down, and down. That's We're not negative just yet because we're still above this positive line. The only way we will go negative is if we come underneath the zero line. That is, that's the only way that will happen. Just because we're downtrending up, up here, that doesn't mean it's negative values. It, the only way we will actually go negative and switch the... The, you know, and have the the trend shift, whether it be bullish trend shift or bearish trend shift, then that's important, right? But when when it's just kind of like ranging upside or downside, then um above above or below the zero line, then that's irrelevant. All all that we care about is if the price action pierces through the zero line then that becomes the change in shift. Okay, so next, that is the VOLD. So the next one we have is ADD. So this is the advanced decline line. So what this does, it compares the total numbers of stocks in the New York Stock Exchange that are positive and negative on the day based on same exact thing, based on yesterday's close. So now we also, now we don't, same thing for this market internal. We do not want to have after hours on. We want to take after hours off right here. So we want to take that off. And we also want to put these price lines on our chart. Positive 2000, 1500, zero, negative 1500, negative 2000. Okay. Then how to read this, if price action is stuck in a, in a range. So in this specific region, negative 1500 or negative 2000 or 2000 and 1500, that means we'll likely be seeing a trending day. So if it's negative, we're gonna be bearish bias. If it's a positive range, we're gonna be bullish bias. So if the price action's up here, or down here as it was today, this is what is known as a pegged advanced decline line. So basically we're hovering around here or here. That's that's what we want to see, especially if we're directional, if, we're, if we have one-sided bias. So now if we are something kind of like this, and we're just price action, just trading and hovering around the zero line, this is probably more of a choppy day and we don't really want to be trading it. So kind of just a visual representation of that, that is here. So you see here, we were, nothing really significantly happened. So like, so from 1030, here's 1030, all the way until two o'clock or so. As you see here, we didn't really do much. This is choppy. And you can see that because of the advanced decline line and also uh, to, 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 to do it right here on the volume. We were hovering around that zero line, right? So we use all these in confluence to each other. So we are on the zero line, we're on the zero line. That already telling me that I don't really want to be trading this because we're not decisive. We're, we're being indecisive, we're chopping around, right? So that is already a telltale sign. I do not want to become active trading at this current second. So anyway, going back to the ADD, um, what we want to see here is 
pretty much trading in this range. We either want to be trading in this specific range or this specific range. Because in this case, like for example, for SPY today, we weren't really bullish at all today, right? We were pretty choppy, pretty sideways because of this, because of the advanced decline line is in the negatives. And also, if you look here, the volume is in the negatives. Therefore, if you knew all this stuff, it wouldn't really be very wise for you to take calls, you know, and long everything. Um, because the information is not really telling you to do something like that, right? So we, we want to use all of these market internals together to have an added confluence. Um, so we want to, ideally, when we see the advanced decline line, we want to be hovering in either the negative region down here or the positive region up here um, to really showcase a, a possible direction, either bullish direction or bearish direction. So that is the advanced decline line. Now, the next one is the tick. So the tick is, uh, you, you wanna, th these are all intraday, by the way. You wanna be looking at these on the intraday basis. Um, five to 15 minutes, usually pretty good. So on this one, we'll do the 15 minute. And then we'll do a 15 minute for here too on SPY, just to showcase an example in a bit. But anyway, so the tick compares the total number of stocks in the New York Stock Exchange that are moving up or down independent of yesterday's close. This is the only market internal that does not care about yesterday's close. It is used on an intraday basis only. Information that is read at the exact moment of time. Usually these are updated pretty much every three seconds, right? So uh, the ticks move extremely quickly. Therefore, that's why you wanna have a little bit larger time frame, maybe like five, maybe 15. Um, so you don't really want to be on the smaller time frame because it'll be a lot of noise. Um, now you want to have uh, price lines as well. You want to have 1,000, 800, zero, negative 800, negative 1,000, right? So, uh, so what you want to do is, so actually there's another indicator that I use. It's called the tick high, tick low. Um, also a private indicator if you want it, just send me a message, happy to help. But what it does, as you can kind of see here, the green and red arrows, these are distribution ticks. So above the zero line is considered bullish. So here's a green tick because we, we closed above the zero line, therefore green tick. Whereas if it is a red tick, it's because we close below the zero line, like way down here, we close all all these are red ticks. These are all bearish ticks because we closed below the uh, zero line, okay? So now something that's super, super important to understand is above or below this $1,000 level is extremely emotional. This is an extremely emotional either oversell or overbought. Aggressive selling or buying like this down in the thousand dollar regions are not sustainable and usually will snap back to the zero level. Um, then that's when we want to see the zero level respect it. If not respect it, it'll pretty much continue in the same direction. So, okay, what the heck does that even mean? All right. So, in this case, here's a prime example. So, you see here on the left hand side at uh, 11 15 a.m., we had a nice downtrend, right? It's nice downtrend. We were down about $2. So a lot of people probably got trapped out here. They're probably chasing the puts, right? They're try they're chasing puts and they got caught out at the lows. But if you saw here on the tick, right? At the same time frame, 1115, look where the tick was. We were under that thousand dollar mark, right? So usually because it was aggressive selling, it was very emotional. This is not sustainable. Normally it will snap back up to that $0 area, which it did. It snapped right back up. This is a prime example why we do not want to chase an extremely extended lows or extremely extended highs. So there's another example that happened today as well. So this is an extremely extended high right over here. So we just rallied literally four points, right? And people probably got caught up here buying calls. 
Look at the look at the tick. We were over a thousand. This is not sustainable. Therefore, it snapped right back down to the zero and actually flushed below it. And look what happened. We flushed three points within a very short duration of time, right? So that's very, very important to know because this can help you get in and or get out of trades or just basically stay out of trades. Because like, for example, down here, if you're not active yet and you saw this, oh, wow, geez, we just went down three points almost in a very short duration. And I see that the tick is below this 1000 key area. I could fade this. Like I could basically do the opposite. So instead of when everyone's chasing the lows for puts, I'm actually going to buy a call right here because I have high justification. This tick is telling me that we are extremely emotional. This is overselling. Right, this is not sustainable, and usually it will snap back up, which it did right here. It snapped right back up. So you would take calls in this example, and you would keep your stop loss tight. Obviously, right underneath this low, like right under here, is your stop loss. So you're not really risking very much money, and you you had a pretty good risk reward here. You if you know if you ended up cutting this at the 376 resistance psychological hole number, you you had pretty good risk reward trade you got a two and a half dollar reward for about 25 cent risk like that's that's fantastic honestly so using this tick can really help you not chase and possibly do the opposite bias so whoever was chasing puts down here this morning they got you know they didn't have very much fun whereas if you had this market internal tick on and you're like, oh, geez, you know, we snap all the way down here to the thousand, negative a thousand. And I know that this isn't sustainable. Let me take a stab at calls. And those people that took a stab at calls had some fun. All right. So these type of examples happen pretty often. Like same thing up here. We, we snapped all the way up to, uh, to a, a positive a thousand. Wasn't sustainable. Boom. And we also kind of had a tiny little bit of a double tap as well. So you can use added confirmations. Like you can use indicators with these on your, on your spy. You can use, you know, pattern recognition. You can use all that other stuff. All right. Now, just, just a side note, you do not use indicators for any of these market internals, like, like the volume, advanced decline line, the tick, you do not use any indicators, any of that shit whatsoever. You, the only thing you can really use is um, trend lines. So like the, 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 the tick you can use trend lines for, right? Um, but anything else like indicator wise or anything like that, you, you don't, yeah, you, know, you don't do that. Um, but uh, so you kind of want to combine all of these market internals together, and you want to use them to establish context of any move that happens in the market, right? So example is your is your tick confirming the action that happened on the day? Is your tick Negative a thousand or positive a thousand. If it's really extremely oversold or overbought, usually it will snap back down. All right. It'll snap back down to the zero line. And if it snaps, in this case, if it snaps back up to the zero line, which it did today, what we want to see is we want to actually, if we're still bullish, we want to see this continue higher. And we want to go back up here because that would, you know, that would continue our direction. If we end up rejecting off the zero line, then we want to start cutting our calls. We want to start cutting our calls because it can go right back down like it did right here. All right. So we, we want to use this information together. Next is your volume confirmation. You know, is it confirming the action that happened in the day? Is the volume negative? Is it positive? Is it directional? Is it, you know, is it chopping around? Like, what is it doing? You can use this to your advantage. All right. What about the dec decline? You know, the advanced decline line, is it in the negative range? Is it in the positive range? Is it just hovering around the zero line? Like if everything, like if this is hovering around the zero line, this is hovering around the zero line, I don't want to be active. I don't want to be trading this. If my ratios are one to one, I don't want to be trading this, right? If, you know, if my ticks are all by the zero line, I don't want to be trading this. Like this can help me stay out of trades, right? So another thing is, okay, if we're trading intraday, can we be a buyer after a huge move to the downside? Are the internals still green enough to justify and give me the confidence? Or can I be a seller if we see a large rally, but all of our internals are still pointing red, right? So like these are the aspects I want you to start thinking about 
as you start monitoring the market internals on your own. All right, so once again, we have the volume, the advanced decline line, the tick, and all of these are for the New York Stock Exchange. Therefore, you wanna also have another uh, chart of an SPY product, whether it be SPY, ES, SPX, you know, any of those you want to, so this way you kind of use all of this in conjunction with each other and it'll really, really help elevate your trading. It'll help you stay out of trades and sit cash and it'll help you possibly uh, hold trades longer. Um, so it's, it'll really help with your efficiency. Um, but that's pretty much my spiel on market internals. Do you guys have any questions about that? How to utilize it? Anything like that? And then after that, we'll just do a regular open-ended question, uh, answer, uh, question and answer. Uh, so I, 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 you, might have, you must have came a little late. So both of these indicators up here, this ratio and this one, these are private uh, scripts on, on Thinkorswim. If you want them, just message me privately, either on you know, Telegram or Discord. I'll just send them over to you privately. Uh, but yeah, these are this is the market breadth script, and this is the high-low tick. So, which shows you these little distribution. So that's, that's, those are the specific um, scripts. Now you only use these scripts for this, like market breadth, you only use for the volume, uh, the high, low tick, you only use for this. You do not use this for anything else. So just, just, just so you know. Uh, I completely disagree with you. Tracking SPY and NASDAQ is faster than looking around at all this. How is this? You're, you're acting like this is complicated. Looking at 15 different indicators, this is this is three. I, I know you're trying to be a troll and trying to be funny, but this is three. If you're not able to handle three indicators, you shouldn't be trading, period. Stop trolling or I'm going to kick you. Now, can I have some real questions? Give me some real questions. Vault, what should we look at again? All right, that's a good question. So what we wanna see for the vault. So basically just to really, really sum it up so it's super easy, um, it is the volume difference. So what we wanna see is we wanna see the price action right out of the gate pretty much being directional, either to the downside or to the upside, right? We wanna see that because when it's, in this case, since it's a negative value, it's under the zero line, usually it's considering uh, a possible downtrending day, so a bearish day. If it's trending to the upside, it's considered bullish because it's above the zero line. So that's something we wanna see. We wanna see trending. We do not wanna see this. If we're chopping around the zero line, that's showing a lot of indecision. We do not want to see that. If we see that type of stuff, we don't want to be we don't want to be active. We don't want to be trading that. We want to be sitting cash. We want to be patient. Also, uh, something else we want to be noticing is the actual market breadth bubbles, the ratios. If these ratios are like one to one or negative one to one, that's basically saying that there's not much volume influx into the market. We don't want to be trading during that. We want to be trading when the, the ratios are higher. So like maybe three to one or five to one, you know, negative six to one because the positive value, so like plus five to one is bullish. Negative values such as like negative six to one, that is bearish. So we also wanna be seeing these in confluence. We wanna see these agreeing. We wanna see the New York Stock Exchange ratios and the NASDAQ ratios either both bearish or both bullish, right? We wanna see them agreeing on uh, confirmation. Because if they're not agreeing, that's basically saying that could be a choppy day. We, we don't want to be trading if they're not agreeing. Hope that makes sense. So the ADD. So another question is, what is the ADD? It is the advanced decline line. It basically compares the total number of stocks in the New York Stock Exchange that are positive and negative on the day based on yesterday's close. Uh, time frames to use on these, honestly, anything underneath the hourly, um, like we said before, this is not for swing trading. This is all for intraday analysis. 
I would use anywhere from the five minute to the hourly. I, I wouldn't use anything underneath the five minute because it's going to give you a lot of fake outs, a lot of noise and anything above the hourly is just, you know, it's kind of irrelevant because we're, you know, this is only strictly for intraday anyway. Uh, so above zero line is bullish and below zero line is bearish. Yes, absolutely correct. Uh, one second. This refreshes with the market not lagging. No, this isn't lagging whatsoever. This is literally the the average of five hundred stocks. Like this is this this market internal is, is the New York Stock Exchange. Like. This is the New York Stock Exchange, all and just pretty much combined together. Oh, geez, this is a big question. One sec. How do I efficiently implement all of this information in real time? This has been great information, but I'm kind of struggling to see how and when I can plug this into my intraday trading and do it quickly. Sorry if this is a silly question. No question is silly first and foremost, but yeah. So especially if you are trading indexes, like if, if you're an index trader, that's really useful for you because you can tell like all of this information that we're talking about, the vol, the ADD and the tick are all useful for the New York Stock Exchange, the SPY. So if so same thing. So like whatever product that you're trading, especially if it's in the SPY, so maybe if it's Apple, maybe if it's Microsoft, maybe if it's Amazon, you know, like the top holding weights, this is that all of this information, the market internals are still useful for it, right? And you basically just want to have kind of a check mark to yourself. You want to just go over the check mark, be like, okay, how are my ratios? Are my ratios at least above two to one? If not, that's already a no trade. All right, how are my how's my price action? Is it is it hovering around the zero line? If it is, that's already not a trade. But if it's directional, something like that, that's a, that's a possible trade. Okay, next. All right. So where is my advanced decline line price action? Is it hovering in 1500, 2000? No. Okay, that's not a trade. All right. We want we want to see this hovering in the 15 to 2000 or 2000 to 1500. If that's not happening, that's not a trade. All right. Ticks. How are the ticks doing? Are we are we a thousand? Are we a thousand? Are we at zero? Like, because we can we can get a lot of counter moves. We can we can fade a lot of moves, especially if we are having these emotional selling and or emotional buying because they're not sustainable. If that is happening, then we might be able to get a fade trade. So basically, do the opposite. So we want to kind of use all of these in conjunction and have kind of a a mental checklist in a sense, right? Um, so if one or two things or three things aren't happening, that's pretty much an indication of I'm going to sit cash. But if everything's aligning for me, that you know, I'm going to be taking a, something related to SPY, whether it be SPY index, whether it be maybe Apple, Microsoft, you know, something that's a high weight in SPY. Um, so you can you can you can use it multiple different ways. But yeah, you definitely want to use all these in conjunction and kind of just have a mental um, kind of a checklist in a sense. So the ticks correlate to one specific stock. No, they correlate to every single New York Stock Exchange stock. It's the average of 500 stocks at one specific time. And they're updated every three seconds. Do any of these help give an idea of the next day gap direction? If so, what will we be looking for? No, not really, because we talked about this before. This is more for intraday basis. What is my bias leaning for tomorrow? Do not know. Can anything can happen overnight session? For tick, what would you say are ideal candles for entries? The ones that hover at the zero line? No, honestly, my ideal entries would be somewhere underneath the thousand or above the thousand because usually, like we said, these are not sustainable. They're an overreaction. Therefore, they're probably going to snap back to the zero. So you, you would use the tick pretty much for counter trend trades. So like fading, like if we're, if we're up here, we could possibly enter puts. If we're way down here, we could possibly enter calls. Uh, 
Um, was there any other things to look for for the uh, ADD for it to be in 15 to 2000 range or anything else to notice as well? Quick, quick, very good question. Honestly, um, you could you could start kind of being aware of it if it's in like the thousand as well, like the thousand or like above the thousand for sure. But kind of just a really good super confirmation would be within this range. Um, and, but if it's hovering around the zero line, you don't really care about it. You, you care, you become much more um, aware and caring about it once it's in, you know, below the thousand and you start really caring if it's within this $1,500 to $2,000 range. Do you have all these market internals pulled up when you were trading spot? Yes. This is how I trade spy. I, I look at this stuff and I also have another screen over here. So I have two different screens. So I pretty much look, I kind of just flip back and forth really quickly. So I already have everything set up. Uh, the indicator is market breadth for the bold and the indicator for this is high low tick. Both of these are not public on Thinkorswim. Please just message me privately if you want them. Thank you. Can you go over expiration date? Zero DT never works for me due to theta. Um, well, you kind of just answered your own question. If it's zero DT doesn't work for you, stop trading zero DT. So, all right, we'll just kind of dive into that real quick. For If you decide to trade zero DT contracts, perfectly fine. Do not hold them for more than 45 minutes. You want to be in and out quickly. If they're not going in a direction, must cut. After lunchtime, so basically 1 to 2 p.m. Eastern, do not trade zero DTE. Not in your favor because one small movement not in your direction will absolutely destroy your contracts. Um, so after lunchtime, you want to be rotating into the next expiration. So let's say, for example, you are trading an index. Maybe it's a Monday and it's after lunchtime. You would rotate into Wednesday's contract. Okay, the next expiration. So say you're at trading AMD, right? And it's a Friday. That's after lunchtime. You switch into the next expiration. So that upcoming Friday, that'll help you tremendously. Hope, hope that answers your question. Do you think trading SPY and QQQ alone can make you very profitable? Yes. Um, now you don't wanna just tunnel vision only on SPY and QQQ because you can miss out on tons of other opportunities. Um, so you want to have your, you know, your bread and butter in a sense, but you also don't want to just only strictly trade only those. So, so you want to still be aware of what the other market is doing, like what oil is doing, what energy is doing, you know, so forth and so forth. Do you use all three of these market internals during intraday? Yeah, you want to use all three of these together. They're not just one specific thing. You want to use all three together. What indicators do you use for swing trading? Uh, TTM squeeze, 200 and 300 day moving average. Uh, stochastic isn't bad, but yeah. Uh, one sec. Do 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 do. Twenty second. Let's try to do. I'm trying to find a good example for you guys. 
One sec. Second. Okay, there we go, seventh. Seventh, one sec, I'm just setting everything up. Give me one second. Okay. Okay. So this is a bullish day, clear uptrending day. So what do we see on the eternals? First and foremost, remember we, we were not hovering whatsoever at the zero line. We were straight out of the gate and directional. That's already something I'd like to see. Now, unfortunately, I'm not able to rewind the, the ratios, unfortunately, but I can almost guarantee you the ratios were both bullish on that day and probably a high bullish ratio because of this, this amount of volume coming through. This was a $10 move today, well, on the 7th. All right, so that's pretty much one thing we want to see is something like that right out of the gate directional, whether it be bullish or bearish. That's, that's kind of a check mark one we want to see. And then the next one would be a high ratio. Unfortunately, I'm not able to rewind it, but I can guarantee you there was a high ratio. Next, look where this advanced decline line is going. It's going right to that bullish area. So it's going upwards. So that's as bullish already. And it's going to hover and start hanging out around this $1,000 and higher. So that's something we, we care about. And then look at the ticks. None of the ticks whatsoever were underneath the 800. So there's no real bearish ticks whatsoever. They're all bullish. That's another thing. And look at what happened with SPY. We were pretty much every single pullback got bought up, every singular one. So 1015, so this 1015, when we hit that 800, negative 800, snapped right back to zero and came away to 1000. And then when we get this 1100 bounce, look at that, we came right back down. And this is when you actually can use trend lines, by the way. Trend line snapped right back up. Okay, 1215 came right down to that negative area, snapped right back up, pulled back was bought. 150 came underneath the zero line, snapped right back up. So you see, you can use all these in conjunction. This was directional. All the ticks kept getting snapped right back up. The advanced decline line is bullish, it's directional, and it's heading right to this, this, this area that we want to be in. So that's how we can use it in, as an example. Are these considered lagging indicators, the market internals? No, not really. How do you use the TTM squeeze? I'm not going over that right now. That's, that'll take me like 20 minutes just to answer that question. Um, my next lesson, I'll talk about indicators for you guys. Do you read the tape? Yes. Um, I'm, I'm assuming these don't work with the mobile app. Probably not. I'm, I'm honestly not too sure. I don't mobile trade whatsoever. Any other questions, my guys? Anything else you want to chat about? I'll do a couple more questions. Um, and then I will end it for tonight. So just give me a couple more. Anything else you want to talk about? Anything you're possibly struggling with? Any questions? Anything you're confused over? Let's chat about it. Let's get it out of the way. And uh, yeah, so I'll answer a couple more.
Is the ratio add-on for TradingView? I do not believe so. I think it's only for Thinkorswim. I'm going to be honest. I think this is only for Thinkorswim, unfortunately, but yes. Best way to time exits. Uh, I mean, that's kind of a broad question there. Uh, you would time exits into key resistance or support zones. If you, you want to be pop, you want to be selling into the pop for the IV uh, spike. When the IV spikes, you get more bang for your buck for contract values. Um, if it breaks your structure, you're not in thesis anymore, then you have to cut. Um, depending on your level of aggression, you either exit on the two minute time frame or the five minute time frame. Really, you know, anywhere from in between that. Um, just really depends on how aggressive you want to cut or how conservative you want to be. What are we looking at when someone says a stock is relative strength or relative weakness? Yeah, so that's a good question. So when someone says relative strength, if let's say the overall tech market is selling off, so like Apple selling off, Microsoft selling off, um, you know, Google is selling off, like all the big, big names are selling off, but then Tesla's over here just bullish as shit when everything else is downtrending. That's an example of relative strength. Or when everything else is like super bullish and one, one lagging name is just really bearish, that's an example of relative weakness. Okay, how can we take advantage of this? So if something is showing severe relative strength when the market was downtrending, you want to take note of this because whenever the market inevitably bounces, that stock that was holding up really well already will probably do even better during a bullish market. So that's why we want to take advantage and take mental note of what is being strong and also what is being weak. So if you know the market ends up rolling over more and there's a relative weakness play, that's the name you want to be shorting first. Hope that helps. How, okay, that's an odd question. How long does it take me to write my newsletter? Uh, a couple a couple hours, I guess. Really depends on how in-depth I want to be. When I first started my newsletter, fun fact, when I first started my newsletter, I had a, a shit ton of information. Um, and it got really, really overwhelming. So like each weekend, it would take me about 10 to 14 hours. And that wasn't sustainable. <laughs> So I ended up downsizing the information I put on the newsletter because, you know, 14 hours every weekend is pretty extreme. Um, so now they take me about like six or something like that. So I basically did it in half. Um, so, yeah. But I still, you know, I still provide great information. I just, I just downsize it a bit. Um, what is my trading strategy? I have multiple. It depends on the, the, Depends on the market environment, depends on the stock I'm trading. Um, there's not just one specific answer. I trade first pullback breakouts. I trade supply and demand. Um, I trade open breakout strategies. You know, I trade multiple different things. Can we talk about small accounts? Sure. What do you want to talk about? How long have I been trading? Uh, two and a half years. I'm not going over a entire trading strategy right now. I'm sorry. I'll do over. I'll do trading strategies and indicators. Our next lesson. What do you do to ensure getting filled if a position goes against you? Market order. Either 
literally slap in the ask or market order. That's the only way you'll get filled quickly. When's my next class? Sometimes next week. Um, I'll give you guys a heads up. I usually do one or two a week. How should we rely on Brett's challenge? I mean, I wouldn't really rely on anyone for signals. I mean, yes, obviously the, the challenge is very important and, you know, it's beneficial to you, but I wouldn't, you know, just rely on someone because if XYZ person up and takes a vacation or something on you, how, and you're just relying on them, how the hell is that going to benefit you? You know, you want to know what the hell these people are doing, like myself included. Like I, like, that's why I strive for, like, the educational aspect. I'm trying to, like, educate people, like, hey, this is why I'm entering. This is my trade review. This is what I saw. Like, this is my justification. I'm not just be like, hey, here's a signal. Follow me. Okay, here we go. There's an entry. There's a cut. Boom. Like, I'm, I'm, I, my, I strive myself on, you know, educating you guys to really understand what the hell I'm seeing and what I'm doing so you're able to replicate it yourself. It's very important that you become self-sufficient and not just rely on other people um, because that person could up and go next tomorrow for all you know. I'm not saying it's going to happen, but, you know, obviously you never know. Um, something I would highly recommend doing is write down people's signals. Be like, hey, XYZ person called this out at 10 a.m. They called this out, this stock out, this price out, and then check it out later. Be like, okay, they cut at 11 a.m. Go back later and be like, okay, what the heck do these people see? Find it. Figure it out yourself. Now, you know, for next time, because it all this shit happens very often. Like, history repeats itself. You know, it's your job to do your due diligence. Don't just rely on someone else. Education, education, education. Hard stops or mental stops? Mental stops. How many trades do I take a week? Don't know. It could be one, could be 10. Really don't know. It depends on how much I want to trade that week. I don't have a specific set uh, of trades. All right, I'll take two more questions. Give them out. To, give them to me. Give them to me. Um, if you're trading index on an intraday basis, I would recommend staying at the money or in the money. I wouldn't really recommend going out of the money. If anything, go like one strike out. But if you're not able to afford any of that, just really trade something else. Trade something you're able to afford, realistically. How often do I swing trade? Um, I'm going to be honest. I haven't really, I haven't really, uh, I haven't really swung for a bit, truthfully. I, I swing time. I swing sometimes, but mainly I'm more of a scalper in intraday lately. How do you correlate your price target on a stock with contract price? Use Active Trader. What are your rule of thumb to exit trades? Take profits. Take profits when it reaches my target, trim at my target level, exit a trade when it invalidates my thesis and my structure. Small premium contracts, you do understand that pretty much most of my analysis and most of the signals that I put out are all catered to small accounts, every single one of them. I, I don't really trade large cap stuff, like large contract stuff. So like every single play that I call out is cheap, just, just an FYI, because you asked that question like seven separate times. How do you know a market closed bullish into the next day? Um, I think I understand what, what you're saying. So, like, I, hold on. Could, could you rephrase your question, please? The person that asked, "How do you know a market closed bullish into the next day?" Because I think I understand what you say, but I just want to—I just want to clarify for a second. Okay, so you're not rephrasing yourself. So just one more question. I'm gonna I'm gonna head out. 
Anything we got here. A lot of people are asking about messaging me. Here's my information. Feel free to message me. Will we be bullish tomorrow? Oh, let's get into this one. I've roasted people on this on this question. So if you ever in my, my chats, when people ask me this question, I do not enjoy it. So let, let's get it over out of the way. When someone asks me, hey, Scrub, what is it tomorrow going to be bullish? Is tomorrow going to be bearish? How am I going to know? How are you going to know? How is anyone going to know? The, the World War III could happen tonight. A fucking nuclear bomb could happen overnight in Russia. Like, we, we don't know, right? Overnight session has not opened yet. 3 o'clock a.m. Eastern time is when the action really starts happening. When someone asks me, hey, what's going to happen tomorrow? I don't know into the pre-market you know ask me at like 9 9 25 in the morning maybe i can give you a better answer but someone asked me 12 hours in advance bro i don't know you don't know i don't know no one knows anything can happen overnight having that one directional bias and be like oh tomorrow's gonna be bullish tomorrow's gonna be bearish like dude no have an open mind and play whatever is presented to you play you know just look at the pre-market and be like, okay, this looks good for possibly bulls tomorrow. This looks good for possibly bears today. Like whatever, whatever the case, but like trying to anticipate something 12 hours in advance, you're literally just wasting your time. Like I don't make any levels at night. I don't do any analysis at night. I literally just wait until the morning. I'm just like, cool. This is, this is what happened overnight session. This looks good. Like, Please get that out of your mindset that, oh, tomorrow's going to be bullish or is tomorrow going to be bearish, is blah, 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 blah. Bro, you don't know. I don't know. No one knows. Just wait until the morning and then reevaluate it. Like, it, it'll save you so much trouble. It'll save you so much time. Do not have a one-sided bias because when you have a one-sided bias, guess what happens? You blow your account because you refuse to cut because you have a one-sided bias. Therefore, get that out of your mindset. Hope that helps. Uh, can I do a challenge? Sure, I'll do a challenge next year. I don't want to upstage everyone else's challenge because Kev and Brett are also doing a challenge. Therefore, Three challenges at once is kind of overkill. So I'll do one startup next year for everyone. I'll do like a, I don't know, two or five thousand dollar count or something. Well, I'll just do a poll and see what everyone wants to do. But yeah, I'll do a, I'll do a count for you guys. Why not? So anyway, if you guys have no other questions, here's some information. There is how you can get a hold of me if you want to talk, if you want to trade reviews, you know, if you want to meet any questions whatsoever. Um, I do have these scripts, just, you know, matches me for them. Uh, they're for thinkorswim. I think some of them are available for trading view. I'm not too sure. Um, but yeah, thank you guys for joining. Hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned some cool stuff. Enjoy the rest of your night. See you guys tomorrow and talk to you soon. Thanks again. There's my information again, if you want to contact me and we can talk and chat. I always love to help other people. Always love to help another trader. Toodaloo. Good night.